What's going on everybody? Welcome to part 10 of the Python 3 basic series. We have been working on our game of tic-tac-toe up to this point, and in this video we are going to be determining whether or not we've got a winner, or at least one of the versions. So, but syntax, we haven't even done user input yet. I understand. Um, that's really going to be like the last thing that we add. So if you're wondering when that's coming, or if it's coming, it's definitely coming. It's going to be a full game of tic-tac-toe, I promise. Um, but really, to test all this stuff, it would be really tedious to like enter in all the little inputs along the way. So we're really just going to kind of hard code the game and do the testing, and then at the very end, we'll add in actually, you know, giving user input. So, in order to validate whether or not we've got a winner of the game of tic-tac-toe, there's really, um, you know, three, maybe four, ways to win the game of tic-tac-toe. Four via programming. Three if you're just explaining it to a friend. So, the first way is you could win horizontally, as player number one has done here, right? This row. Uh, you can also win uh, vertically. So if, the, you know, this is all the same, or these are all the same, or these are all the same, you won. The other way is diagonally. So that's if these three are the same, or these three are the same, okay? That's how you win. Now, just like the other things, this is like, these are clearly subtasks. So determining winner breaks down into three, three like, subtasks of programming. Like, basically, it's going to take kind of three different algorithms to determine you know, is there anyone that won horizontally, anyone vertically, anyone diagonally? And arguably diagonally, depending on which way you calculate it, might take actually two, diff two different algorithms. Ding, time to code. Okay, so let's handle for horizontally. So how might we handle horizontally? Well, I can think of like a few different methods. Like one way we could do that is by, uh, we, we could go row by row, and then maybe um, for each element in that row, like we could set like some sort of flag. And then what we could say is like for each element in that row, if that element equals row, maybe, uh, you know, row and then index zero. If all of those equal row index zero, then congratulations, you've done what you intended to do. Now, uh, if not, if that's not true, then no one won. But that's gonna get like really messy really quickly, not really going to be the most ideal way uh, for us to do that. So the next way a programmer might come up with uh, doing this would be something like this. So let's say define win. Uh, we're going to pass uh, current game because we've decided that's the way we're going to do it. And then uh, we're going to um, we're going to do like something like this, like four row in game. And then we could say, uh, let's just, we could print the row. But then we're going to say, you know, call one equals row zero. And then we're going to do the same thing for two and three. So call two, call three, row one, two. And then at the very end, well, really in each for loop, not really at the very end, if call one equals call two equals call three. Hot diggity, we got ourselves a winner. Okay, cool. So, win. Uh, and then game is what we call it, right? Game, yeah. So, run it. Boom! We got ourselves a winner. Congratulations, player number one. Now, what's the problem with this, though? So, like, let's say, um, let's say we actually write this code, and then we write this code for, like, all of our, you know, uh, you know, you could do this for all the verticals. You could do this. <laughs> um, <laughs> surprised that happened again. Thank you. Noro? I'm not really sure how to pronounce that, but thank you for your support. Um, anyways, back to what we were doing. Um, so with, you know, we, we can do it this way, but what happens when your boss comes to you and says, hey, Johnny, um, we really like what you did with the 3x3 three three tic-tac-toe. Make it a 4x4 four four now. And then you're like, dang it. And then you're like, okay, but that's okay. That's okay. I will just go into my code and change it. In a call for. <laughs> uh, super simple, right? Um, but then what happens when your boss comes back and, and don't forget, you've done this now for however you decided to calculate vertical and diagonal. And then your boss comes back and they're like, hey, Johnny, um, can we make the game size of tic-tac-toe dynamic? And at this point, you are going to, 
have a b pretty big problem because you've hard coded this. So then you might be thinking, well, I can't do dynamic, um, but what I can do is I could have a separate tic-tac-toe game for each size of uh, tic-tac-toe. Like I have a three by three version. I could have a four by four and a five by five and all that. Like I could just have a separate script. And that's not good. That's what I would describe as um, disgusting. Okay, but um, through my career of doing contracting consulting for various companies, I've seen people do that. I've seen people have a thousand or more variations of a script that is otherwise identical except for like one variable change. Um, don't do that. <laughs> That's called technical debt and you do not want it. Like the first time you program something like that, okay, I guess maybe you'll get away with it, but then over time as things change or you need to make minor changes, suddenly you need to write a Python program to make the changes. <laughs> so this isn't ideal. So we know, because we've talked about repetition and stuff, we know this is probably not right. Then we, we are thinking, okay, well, what if, what if we do do that initial idea where it's like, you know, we iterate over the rows and then maybe, um, um, not match flag could be like false. Um, and then, whoops, so a not match flag is false. And then for item in row, we could say if item equals row zero, um, if item equals, I'm already confusing myself now. Uh, if item, how about if item does not equal row zero, not match equals false. No, not match equals, <laughs> this is so hard, uh, equals true. Okay, then, um, not match equals false, not match equals true. So, if, not match equals <laughs> if not, ma if not, <laughs> oh man, this, this was really poorly written, um, print winner. What have I done wrong? I thought that was going to get away with that uh, call one not defined. Where, well, where is, oh, oh, it was down here for some reason. Okay. Okay, apparently they're all winners. This isn't even what I wanted to spend my time doing, but for row in game, um, how about all match equals true for item in row if all match equals false um, if all match print winner. That's probably a little better, but again, we're still having uh, like this whole equals. What are you talking about? If item for item in row. Uh, print item and then row zero if item so one 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 should be a winner but here this definitely should not be a winner uh, all match if item Oh, double equals false. Come on, man. Okay, try again, idiot. Okay, so so here we have this is the, this is the basic series, by the way. Okay, so um, okay, so this it was that double stupid double equals. Um, still still tagging me after seven years. Okay, so so in this so this works right, and this is dynamic enough. Like we could make this larger. The problem is that's a lot of code for that. Like, arguably we don't need this. That was just for debugging purposes, but we needed all that. So what can we do instead, right? So I'm going to let you guys in on a pretty big secret of programmers, and I probably shouldn't be sharing it with you, but I'm going to share it with you. And it is called google.com. <laughs> so this is how anybody writes JavaScript, I'm pretty sure. Okay. So, so anyways, uh, any downvotes on this video, I know you are a JavaScript programmer. So anyway, um, so how can we use Google to our advantage? One thing we can do is check if all items in list are same. 
And we're using Python, well, it guessed Python for us, so <laughs> fine. Okay, cool, we did a search, because we didn't know how to do this. So rather than going to Stack Overflow and posting our own question or joining a Discord and asking such a Googleable question, we just Googled it, right? That was really simple. Okay, so let's check the first answer. Awesome. So, okay, this person has really broken it down. Um, I feel like <laughs> I feel like the title s says enough. Um, performance, he would not like to incur any unnecessary overhead. Um, okay, so that's a lot of information for a simple question. Okay, we've got... Um, a, a good deal of information here. Some pretty confusing looking code, to be honest. Some sort of, this looks like a, maybe a, yeah, I guess. So at some point, you know, you could use like a generator or something. So rather than iterating over every single element, as soon as you find one element that doesn't match, you could immediately stop iterating. You don't have to waste any further time. Okay, we've got some table. <laughs> Dude, this is such a simple question. And <laughs> man, these people are going all out. Okay, so here we have a really simple answer to the simple question. Um, I do appreciate some of this stuff. Um, I can't believe there's like tables of times, like who built this? This is hilarious. Um, but anyways, uh, yeah, so we've got a great answer. Not only that, I mean, there is an abundance of information to what I would describe as an unbelievably simple, simple question. It was asked eight years ago, and honestly, the answer today looks to be pretty good. There may be like some sort of method nowadays. If there is, I don't know it. Um, and like I said before, you, know, you don't actually always need the special method to do these things. Um, but anyway, this looks pretty good. X dot count, okay. And we just see, okay, does, is the count of the first element, so, so we count how many occurrences of the, you know, the element in the zeroth position, how many occurrences are there? And then we see, is that the same number as the length of that list? If so, that means all of them are the same. So, um, <laughs> six times faster than the set solution. Interesting. So I don't really know how dot count works, but it, it surely would have to iterate over every item in the list. But anyways, that's simple enough. I think everybody watching this can understand that one. Also, it's one line of code. <laughs> so rather than this nonsense, we could just do boop and then replace X with row row and row. Okay, then we ask um, if this print winner. Run it. And there we have our winner. Now, one more thing we need to address is at the start of the game, everything is zeros. So, um, so like, what if I do this, right? Right now, there are no winners, but if we run this, it's gonna say winner, <laughs> right? Um, so we need one more final check, and that is and row zero uh, does not equal zero. Easy enough. Uh, let's run that one more time, and we see uh, that no, there is no winner because the one row that did have everything equal, uh, well, that had zeros and that's no good. Okay, so a lot of information there. Um, some s silly mistakes on my behalf, but that's okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and leave those in there. Uh, I think it's good, especially on a basics tutorial, to kind of go over the uh, confusing bits, but um, I think that's it. So, if you guys have questions, comments, concerns, whatever, feel free to leave them below. And aside from our uh, sponsor in the video, I appreciate the most recent other channel sponsors, Luis Fernando, I can't say the Macedo, I don't know, uh, Reginald Roberts, that's a, interesting, that's a good sounding name, Ratish Nair, Akros, and Metanoia, I, I don't know. That's a, that's a challenging one. I'm not sure how you pronounce the O-I-A bit. Comment below if you see this. I'm curious. Okay, 
Thank you guys very much for your support. It helps me do what I love to do, which is this. So, uh, questions, comments, whatever, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, in the next video, uh, we're going to be solving the next easiest version of this challenge, which is the vertical winners. Because diagonal is going to be kind of annoying, um, but doing the vertical is doable. I think most people probably watching this could think of various ways, at least maybe not the most efficient way, but a way. Uh, to do it. So that's what we're going to be doing in the next video. I will see you there.